How's it going guys? It is 3.27 a.m. Friday, May 27th here in Japan, and we have a difficult question for immunology slash micro. Maybe some of you will know this instantly. That's great, but this is overall a difficult question. And a very similar one shows up on one of the offline NBME questions for step one. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 22-year-old man. He's got a two-day history of low-grade fever and non-productive cough. Physical exam shows pale conjunctivae. X-ray of the chest shows bilateral interstitial infiltrates. A sample of blood is drawn for spontaneous. The fuck am I saying? A sample of blood is drawn for testing, spontaneously agglutinates during transportation to the laboratory, and immunoglobulin with which the following functions is most likely responsible for the agglutination here. So uh, a bit of an unusual nebulous presentation, uh, and we're just going to walk through the answer choices here. Actually, I should say, why don't I talk about the diagnosis? So when we have an otherwise young, healthy person, teenager or older, who has a bilateral pneumonia. That's what this is, okay? Bilateral interstitial infiltrates. This is atypical pneumonia. This is mycoplasma pneumonia, all right? Generally a low-grade fever. Interstitial infiltrates. Strep pneumo, in contrast, causes a lobar pneumonia. But mycoplasma, chlamydia, legionella, even viral pneumonias, they're almost always bilateral interstitial infiltrates, okay? Now you've got pale conjunctivity pale conjunctivae here in combination with this agglutination finding. This is called cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia, okay? So mycoplasma can cause the formation of cold agglutinins, which are antibodies, IgM antibodies against RBCs. Mmm, ice cream, IgM, okay? So IgM targets red blood cells, and we can get hemolysis. That's why this patient has pale conjunctivae, okay? Uh, hemolysis but we can get agglutination of those RBCs at cold temperatures. That's why it's cold, called cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. In contrast, if you have a condition that causes warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia, okay, so CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukemia is an example, it can cause warm or cold, but a warm uh, is more frequent. Uh, you'll get IgG antibodies that cause hemolysis. They target RBCs, but they can cause agglutination at body temperature. Okay, it's warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia. So that's what this is, mycoplasma pneumonia with cold autoimmune hemolytic anemia. And as I just fucking said, they're IgM antibodies. So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Choice A, enhanced affinity. Wrong fucking answer. This is IgG. Okay, so affinity means strongly binding to. And IgG has the highest affinity. That's why rho gam, as an example, when we administer it to Rh negative women, it has highest affinity, okay, when we give passive immunity, IgG, highest affinity for antigen, all right? That's a lengthy discussion, but I'm just going to move through the clip here. <clears throat> Enhanced avidity, which just means increased binding sites, is the correct answer, IgM, okay? It's a pentamer and technically has 10 binding sites as a result. It's not crucial, the exact number, okay? You should just be aware that uh, IgM has highest number of binding sites. That's avidity, okay? Whereas affinity is strongly binding, as I said. So we'll just whip through the other answer choices here. Choice C, induction of mast cell degranulation, wrong answer. This is IgE, okay? When we have type 1 hypersensitivity, we've got IgE on the surface of mast cells, basophils, they bind antigen at the fab uh, segments, and then fab fragments, and then you're gonna have the IgE come into close proximity, uh, Crosslink, mast cell basophil, degranulates, release histamine, anaphylaxis, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, secondary immune response, induction, wrong answer. This is IgG. Okay, so IgM is the primary immune response. IgG, secondary immune response. And then uh, also wrong answer, secretion across mucosal services. This refers to IgA. Okay, so it's secreted uh, into the gut. Very, very high yield. Uh, it's in tears, saliva. It's in breast milk. Okay, and I should have mentioned before, IgG is the one that crosses the placenta, by the way, uh, but IgA in breast milk, okay? Mucosal services, tears, saliva. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.